Dr. Rashawn Ray, a professor of sociology. Uh, Clearly, uh, the crowd. This was the, the the verdict that the crowds wanted. What impact do you think this is going to have on the Black Lives Matter movement? Uh, would you like? Would you like to do? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I think it's huge. Thank, thank you for having me on the show. I think it's huge, but I think it's simply vindication for what everyone knew should have happened. This case was literally like a slam dunk that everyone saw go in the basket, and people were wondering whether or not the points were actually going to count. There are a few things for people to note here that this case, as exemplary as it is, it's actually an outlier to what happens with law enforcement interactions with civilians in court, rather than an actual norm. What I mean by that is Chauvin is simply a small list of officers who have actually uh, been charged and convicted of police killings. Every year in the United States, over 1,000 people are killed by police. And part of what we need is to ensure that the same level of accountability that happened for Derek Chauvin happens for other officers who engage in egregious acts of misconduct. So these are the sort of things that people are paying attention to, is whether or not Chauvin is going to start to become a pattern and a norm, or whether or not this is simply an outlier, which right now it is. So what made this case different, then? Was it because of that uh, appalling video footage from the uh, police officer's body cam? Well, I mean, look, body-worn camera foot footage is huge, but, but it still shows a limited view. I think that the video evidence from the teenager who recorded it across the street was big. I think just generally the overwhelming amount of video evidence was a big deal. We also have to think the number of witnesses who saw this happening was a big deal. A very diverse group of people, from young people to old people to white people to black people and across the board. The other thing we have to bear in mind is the number of law enforcement officers who actually testified against Chauvin. If we compare this to Freddie Gray, the police chief actually testified for the defense in favor of the officers for them actually breaking Freddie Gray's neck in Baltimore. The other things we have to look at are some of the broad tenets of the trial. The jury was extremely diverse, and research tells us that the more racially diverse uh, the jury pool, the more equitable the outcomes when we compare individuals who are tried for murder. We also have to look at the fact that the prosecutors came from across the state, not just the county, and there were a lot of resources that went into this trial. So again, these things are exemplars. They're not the norm, but I think these sort of issues made a difference in the outcome in this case. But as you say, um, this is a drop in the ocean. I mean, there are so many uh, cases where young black men have been killed by uh, white police officers, and it has never got to the stage that the George Floyd uh, trial got to. Do you think this case will impact positively uh, on, the, on the police force and in the way that they are held accountable in future? Well, this is the thing. Court decisions are about individuals. If we want to change social institutions, which is what we're talking about, changing the criminal justice system that starts with policing, that starts with policy, that starts with consent decrees coming out of, out of the Department of Justice, which I think will happen in droves. We also know that the George Floyd murder did catalyze the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act, which passed the House of Representatives for a second time, most recently, the first time, on what would have been Tamir Rice's 18th-year-old birthday. Tamir Rice was the 12-year-old killed in a park in Cleveland in under two seconds when the police showed up. That officer um, was not found guilty in that, particular, in that particular case and actually went on to work at another police department. So, as you note, we know that there are a series of problems. And even during the George Floyd trial, we had another killing right down the street from where the case was at. So, look, our criminal justice system has a long way to go, but this trial and the verdict was huge, which was much different from, say, Rodney King or some of these other outcomes. This is exactly what should have happened. But this is what people have to think about. If this is the bar, if this is the level for what it takes to actually convict a police officer, people now understand why that rarely happens. Rush on, Ray. Thank you very much indeed for your thoughts there.